today's episode, I'll take you on an intriguing journey through Bohemia in Europa Universalis 4. My goal is to become the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, but not just any emperor. I intend to be a Hussite emperor and it won't be an easy road because I'm the only Hussite country in the world surrounded by enemies. Many wars await me, where my sole aim will be to spread the Hussite faith. In the end, it won't all depend on me, but on the vote of the Protestant Emperor. Will I achieve this ambitious goal? We'll see. I invite you to watch to find out. If everything works out, you'll learn how to get this achievement. Av imperialist Lucas here. At the start, I got news that things aren't going well in Bohemia. Most of the country was devastated, literally. Look at these burning provinces. Additionally, I learned that for 30 years I have a modifier that reduces my tax income and manpower unless I get rid of it earlier. Yes, we shall rise from the ashes. Devastation won't decrease on its own, we just need to have a fortress nearby that we will maintain. I could speed this up by developing provinces, but I won't do that now. For the first few years, I didn't plan any wars, so I reduced army maintenance and disbanded the cavalry. As I was weakened, I had to rely on strong allies. One of the best is of course Poland, with whom I immediately formed an alliance. The next ally will be Burgundy, possible once I handle privileges in my country. Luckily, Burgundy is a rival of the Austrian Emperor, whom I want to weaken at the start, moving smoothly to privileges, very much so. Bohemia has a unique situation with 35% crown land. Before granting privileges, I checked most check missions and ensured none required estate influence, which is unique. So I initially granted the following privileges, leaving space for more over the next few years. I hope to show you this, if I don't forget. I reclaimed land and began recruiting soldiers with all my manpower, increasing my chances during state missions of getting a cheaper advisor. Although I needed a missionary, this mission required converting Prague to Catholicism, which I didn't want. To complete the nobility mission, I quickly cancelled recruitment, completing the military advisor mission. Then I hired the cheaper military advisor and other level 1 advisors. Bohemia also has a strong form of government, the Bohemian elective monarchy. It's a shame Poland doesn't have this. I held off on appointing rivals, hoping Hungary and Austria wouldn't ally, which often happens to me. I repaid all 1% loans taken, as once devastation decreases, I can borrow more money. I then formed marriages and planned to improve relations with my vassals, Guoguf and Opol. The Compacts of Basel. This event informed me of peace between Catholics and Hussites. With compromises made, I respected these pacts to increase the chance of Hussitism's return. Honestly, there was little else to do with Bohemia as I had to wait for the regency to end. Meanwhile, Poland got a Jagiellon. Early in the game, there are many issues with heirs. Soon, I designated my rivals internationally, not hesitating as Austria-Hungary allied. After increasing stability, I granted privileges for cheaper advisors. Soon I elected my first ruler. Don't worry, the main Hasid ruler event will still happen. So I chose the one generating the most points. Importantly, the new ruler meant new royal marriages, especially with Burgundy. Next, I expanded my gold mine in Cheb. I didn't worry about its Catholic religion as it would later convert to Hussitism. Two development levels later, all devastation was gone. Return of the Hussites. Attempts at enforcing the religious peace between Hussites and Catholics have broken down despite our best efforts. Yes, I tried so hard. Giri Zipodebrat, leader of the Hussite faction, has raised an army and now marches upon Prague. He means to make himself king of Bohemia and secure religious freedom for the followers of Hus. From all choices, I decided to restore Hussitism as Bohemia's main religion. This allowed me to complete the Regency mission, cheaply converting Bohemia to the true faith leading to a Hussite empire. I'll start converting provinces from the gold mine one. Hussitism might not be the best religion, but is definitely interesting. Similar to Protestantism with more fascinating but weaker aspects. Remember, a new faith aspect gives a religious casus belli on all nearby countries. In the next three years, I completed the mission to recover from the Hussite Wars, gaining many bonuses and removing the initial negative modifier. These actions significantly increased my income. I could afford a level 2 military advisor and later upgraded him to level 3, as Bohemia has cheaper advisors. After converting the gold mine to the true faith, I granted privileges for increased missionary strength and automated the missionaries. Yes, I'm lazy. 
For the first faith aspect, I chose to increase army volunteers. A few years later, I consolidated the Silesian region into one vassal. Was it the best choice? Not sure, but it was quite good. This led to another Polish diplomacy mission with a chance to recreate the Union over Poland, but Hungary comes first, where I'll cunningly use the Poles. Besides, I prefer Poland to get Danzig as a vassal since they already have Moldavia. But I have to wait for a personal union with Hungary. Meanwhile, after reaching administrative tech 4, I started building churches wherever possible. Okay, not too many yet. I reviewed privileges, hoping for new ones available for Hussites, but unfortunately not. I managed to get a better, cheaper diplomatic advisor by doing missions for the townsfolk. In 1452, I got Jan Rokicana on the Czech throne as my new advisor. I found out Jan was the Bishop of Prague and heavily involved in the Hussite cause. He was also a great speaker, so he'll be useful as an advisor. If you want to convert Bohemia faster, focus on missionaries, but I'll go for the stability of my country, as conversion is already progressing well. I must admit after a few years I have really good advisors, I also sent diplomats to build a spy network in Hungary and Austria. War with these countries was approaching fast and the bigger the spy network, the quicker the siege of fortresses. Unless I get caught. <coughs> My first reform increased tax revenue. I also began introducing the Renaissance Institution in Prague after expanding infrastructure there. Remember, in February 1455, the Hungarians decided whether to unite their dynasty with the Austrians. They rejected it, so I'm sending more claims to the Hungarian throne. I increased my army maintenance and appointed a not-so-talented commander as general. To make the war easier, I called for help from Poland and Burgundy, giving me a significant advantage. With this huge advantage, I decided to directly attack the Austrian Emperor, as I had a mission to weaken him. I don't know if it's a big war to start with, but I had 10 years to prepare. I was lucky most enemy armies attacked the Burgundian Netherlands, which has many fortresses to capture. I already converted smaller countries to my sole true Hussite faith and took their money. A small tip, if you want Austria to enact at least three reforms before toppling them, don't convert duchies to Hussitism, you're already slowing the process. Many countries eyed my Hungary, so I'll face many wars after forming a personal union with them. Less than a year later, I'm only at war with Austria and Hungary, and my troops are besieging Vienna. I captured Vienna after 470 days and I'll burn it as a reward. I ended the war with Austria by humiliating them, which helps trigger the Golden Age and taking Tyrol, a significant gold mine. Then I made all of Hungary my personal union. I no longer need to make a peace deal to take the gold mine because I have a mission that gives me access to the entire Slovak region. I might be wrong because, you know, I'm not very good at reading missions. Now I have wars with Wallachia, Serbia and Bosnia. I call my allies for help, I won't fight alone. Soon Hungary integrated Croatia, freeing up a diplomatic slot for me. Planning to develop the right ideas with Bohemia, I shifted to an administrative focus and chose innovative ideas first. Bohemia has things that scale well with these ideas. However, influence, administrative and quality ideas are also strong alternatives due to the mission. The coalition against me won't form since most countries are at peace with me or are now my subjects. I'll keep Serbia under my control because I plan to use this aspect of faith against the Ottoman Empire in the future. After this war, I immediately broke my alliance with Poland and now have to wait five years. I completed the mission to weaken Austria, giving me territorial claims on Austrian lands. You won't believe it, but Poland lost the Prussian Confederation. How often does that happen? <coughs> I realized I didn't capture Kosovo. I made a temporary alliance with Moscow to help in my conquest of Poland. In a province I can't pronounce, I got faceting, giving me great bonuses. I could now complete the mission to revive Hussitism, which lowers conversion costs and establishes a Hussite center of reformation in Prague. Converting my Catholic provinces first, then my neighbors. Securing the union with Hungary, I demanded all of Slovakia, making them unhappy. Hey, it wasn't mentioned that I have to annex it myself, what's going on? But Hungary's development allowed me to secure the Union again. Unfortunately, a Catholic rebellion occurred, which I had to suppress. The truce with Poland ended, so I claimed the Polish throne. I added cavalry to my army as I could afford it. The first age advancement I accepted reduced aggressive expansion. Poland will be costly. Luckily, I formed a personal union over Burgundy right before attacking Poland. Castile also cleared Burgundy's rebellions for some reason. My war with Poland was delayed by a year, waiting for Austria's decision. It's quite possible that I'll have a war with them soon, even though I'm in a period of peace. Remember, Czechs are a very peaceful nation, and during peacetime, it's good to be pacifists. Yes, Austria demanded those territories, and I firmly said to them, 
Austria seems isolated in this war, though more states join soon, I convinced one of the electors to convert to Hussitism and release Styria. Austria converted too, making Brandenburg the new emperor. No? to roll, and there's nothing better than a weak emperor. I immediately attacked Poland to establish my union over them. I had forgotten about my royal marriage. Moscow turned out to be a useless ally, already 1000 gold in debt. I could have paid it off, but didn't. I realized I forgot to rebuild a fortress. The Polish army ceased to exist, but a new one emerged with a good commander. Unfortunately, I lacked good commanders. Unless, defeating Polish-Lithuanian forces in the mountain fortress was enjoyable. Meanwhile, Silesian forces captured Warsaw. Yes. Silesians took Warsaw. I also welcomed Byzantine refugees, reducing my technology cost by 20% with my ideas, aiming for 30%. When I advanced the administrative technology, which was foolish, I planned to use the Golden Age earlier to cheaply develop new ideas, which would be quality ideas. They give a bonus to infantry, and it just so happens that the Czechs have quite a few of those bonuses. Right here. After several years, I established unions over Poland and Lithuania. Nobody cared. Wow, the war was bloody. I granted customary privileges for higher taxes, not very significant in Bohemia. Securing all of Slovakia meant I didn't lose monument progress, allowing effective development of the gold mine. I had to set new rivals, a who's who of Europe. It's no surprise we were already an eastern powerhouse, even as small Bohemia. I decided to integrate Silesia and continued missions to stabilize Slovakia and enhance our heritage. I expected a few years of peace ahead. I paid off debts for Poland and Hungary. Integrating Silesia made me large enough to call myself the Lion of the Empire, giving me territorial claims on Brandenburg and Saxony, or rather making them my vassals. Conveniently, I had two free relations. I'll wait for aggressive expansion to subside before acting. Lions don't hurry, they walk with dignity. Should I add Hungary to the Empire? Why not? The Ottoman Empire committed seppuku, unexpectedly attacking Poland, thus attacking me, and the Emperor defends me. This will be a bloody war with the Ottoman Empire, given their discipline advantage. Taking Constantinople was relatively easy thanks to Hungary's good siege commander. The Ottoman army decided to besiege Crimea, likely moving to Lithuania or Moldavia. After finishing administrative ideas, I switched focus to military. The Hungarian commander quickly captured fortresses. I didn't want the war with the Ottoman Empire to last long, so I reclaimed Kosovo and took lots of money and war reparations. This country will be a good bank soon. From then on, I developed provinces of my personal unions. The more money, manpower and force limits they have, the more armies they can raise. There are already enough Hussite provinces in the world, and I have secured a Hussite defender of the faith. This ensures that I will be the defender of this faith forever and ever. After completing the mission for a cheaper advisor, which helped replenish my manpower, I demanded strobing from Munich because it has glass, and I need a third such province for maximum mission bonuses. Unfortunately, I haven't inherited Burgundy yet. It seems I've been punished because my gold mine just collapsed. <coughs> I'm rebuilding it now. This resulted in a bigger war than I planned, and I lost all my reserves. However, it was a good reason to convert more states to Hussitism. Just now, the Burgundian Duchess died, and I inherited all of Burgundy, which isn't necessarily good. Okay, Bohemia gained access to the sea, but I need to move my capital here. I'll add all the territories from the Netherlands as states. This expansion forced me to take an additional administrative privilege from the burghers. I moved the capital to Den Haag to avoid Dutch revolts. Additionally, I'll now have shares in the English Channel, which is always good for trade. In all newly annexed provinces, I issued an edict for religious conversion. I also started building courthouses nationwide and preparing for war with France. To connect my two provinces, I converted Poland and Lithuania to Hussitism. After all these actions, we became the largest empire in the world. However, the process of converting the entire region to Hussitism is slow. I might need religious ideas. Soon, with a religious casus belli, I attacked France. Using a religious casus belli reduces aggressive expansion for all conquests. I got it from here. First, I aim to take out the minor states in this war with France because they're annoying. French troops are coming, so I'm retreating. Eh, they caught me. Meanwhile, I completed the mission for Bohemian Crystals, increasing their price and production for the rest of the game. With increased production, I pursued Bohemian industry. The next mission required 20 manufactories. I built a hall in Prague. The Golden City mission was patched by Paradox and no longer allows a 1000 development province. My heirs aren't great. Yes, the previous one had an accident. Territories gained, manpower depleted, and money obtained. Now, I'm a third level defender of the faith. I'm going after 20 more states. By 1500, my aggressive expansion was minimal, so I'll aim to raise the Bohemia Lion. My first target will be Brandenburg's subjugation. Meanwhile, Poland was annexed into the empire. Wow! Annexing Poland with Lithuania caused less aggressive expansion. Expansion. 
Unfortunately, a heretic king took the throne. Premisolotakar IV is a dedicated follower of the Hussite sect. I could kneel and convert Bohemia back to Catholicism. No, let the Hussite ruler reign. This displeased the Pope, but I can ignore it. Premisol is competent. Subjugating Brandenburg angered many states, so I'll wait until December for safety. For example, Saxony has 74 points of aggressive expansion on December 1st, but only 69 on January 1st. I think this allows me to reduce aggressive expansion with all Holy Roman Empire nations. Correct? Now we have 59 points, meaning I'll attack Saxony in 10 years. I received the mission The Fate of Brandenburg. I could make it a personal union march or leave it as is. Any choice ensures Brandenburg won't generate negatives during elections. Vassalized electors usually upset everyone. I'll make Brandenburg a march since it has military ideas. I also improved relations with major Holy Roman Empire countries to avoid coalition threats. I reformed my armies to 14 to 6 for cooperation in battle. I distributed the order of the dragon to increase manpower in all my provinces, which I always need. With diplomatic technology advancements, I started building the Bohemian fleet, mainly for trade. I noticed a new monument in my capital. Was it always here? I began developing Silesia to increase my share in Krakow trade. I won the mission for a better advisor, so I built markets everywhere and granted a trade privilege for 30% and a cheaper diplomatic advisor. I promoted him to level 5. Hmm, 6,66? Now I can delete the markets. 10 years later, I started the war to subjugate Saxony since most countries forgot about Burgundy's annexation. I also enforced Hussite religion, but Saxony will generate even more of this for me. I guess I'll wait until December. I introduced colonialism, allowing me to cheaply adopt the next administrative technology level. And here I have a choice now. What diplomatic idea to adopt? I think the ideas of influence will be ideal. If you have another set of ideas for Bohemia focusing on conquest or vassal management, let me know in the comments. I subjugated Saxony and decided its future status. I didn't have reduced aggressive expansion. Oops, Saxony should remain a vassal for quick integration. I lacked army tradition and had a mission to avenge Nicopolis. Some kind of defeat. I'm sure a viewer could explain this battle. I changed the faith aspect to religious war and attacked the Ottoman Empire despite a forming coalition. I enjoy risks. The coalition might include the entire empire. Oops, I hurried with the Ottoman wars. I quickly seized Turkey's capital, coinciding with the fifth military reform for better defense. I expected an army tradition bonus somewhere here. Despite technological advantages, Ottoman troops had quality superiority. Oh, I'm slaughtering them? I guess my infantry is more effective. Let's return to pacifism. The reformation hadn't started, so I delayed converting provinces until a protestant center appeared, preferably a Calvinist one. The religious war starts 30 years after Calvinism appears. Finally, the reformation began in Denmark. Again. Same like in the last episode. I could convert to Protestantism now, but I won't. If you want to convert, you could do it with one click. After the Ottoman War, I realized I conquered one province too few. Is there an Iron Man friendly mod allowing edict changes with one click? The coalition dissolved. I declared war on Moscow for humiliation, seeking more funds. Because at the 11th level of technology, I will have many workshops to build. Moscow is pretty backwards. As usual, I discovered I could organize the Order of the Dragon for all my vassals and subjects. Funds from Moscow were transported to Bohemia, mere 2.5 thousand. I started wars to convert principalities to Hussitism and gain 60 army tradition points. I might be defeating enemies too quickly. So I'll focus on religious conversion, innovative and influence ideas. That's why I never took them. Meanwhile, the empire expanded further. After several victories, I achieved the legacy of God's warriors. And this is an additional reform. It's a bonus to army tradition here. Too bad I thought it would boost that government reform. It would be more interesting. By 1526, I reached 100% innovativeness as Bohemia. Should I remove those ideas? So the process of expanding Hussite lands progressed well. Fortunately, two reformation centers are in Scandinavia. Now, I just wait for Calvinist revolts. In 1526, the majority of the empire is definitely of Hussite faith. At least that's how it seems to me. Now that aggressive expansion has significantly decreased, it's time to conquer some Austrian lands. I need six provinces to fulfill this mission. The era of reformation has also begun, which is fortunate since I already meet most of the requirements for it. I swiftly proceed with religious wars. Essentially, I conquer the rest of Austria without much care from anyone. I form alliances with Venice and Castile, who promptly go to war against each other. A stroke of luck for me. I proceed with 
the mission to reform Czech industry. Frankly, I regret developing this country earlier, as now we're implementing a special reform that increases chances for additional development in provinces with manufactories, of which I have many across the country. But I delayed the mission for Czech heavy industry, unable to resist such a beneficial bonus. I've also upgraded my army stacks to other sizes, which should suffice for the remainder of the game, I'll join them in larger battles. I've begun to invest in administrative development, having had some issues with governance, courts are well established everywhere and privileges have been distributed. Despite meeting the requirements to be an empire, I cannot be one without being the Holy Roman Emperor. I've also initiated a war with the Ottoman Empire, starting with a battle I'm likely to lose. Fortunately, reinforcements arrived just in time, but the losses were significant. I've received reliable information that Calvinism has emerged, signaling an imminent religious war. Luckily, subsequent battles were more favorable for me. Where did all this Ottoman army come from? Meanwhile, I've accumulated a substantial amount of monarchy points and distributed edicts for provincial development across the board. I enjoy this strategic gameplay immensely. I swiftly reached 800 splendor points, enabling me to trigger a religious war. I even managed to achieve a beautiful beautiful stack wipe of the Turkish army. Meanwhile, the Ottoman army, instead of defending their territory, again went towards Lithuania. Whenever I fight the Ottoman Empire as Poland or with Poland under my control, they always head for that fortress, nothing else. Eventually, significant losses on the Ottoman were inflicted by the combined forces of Burgundy, Brandenburg and Lithuania. I've conquered a large portion of the Balkans, with Greece still awaiting liberation, as the Muscovite Empire declared me their rival and then ceased being my rival. Regardless, Moscow has reminded me of its presence, prompting my decision to attack them. I could potentially build manufactories throughout Poland, Lithuania and Hungary. Meanwhile, what happened to the Mamluks? Where did they disappear to? Investors in Moscow have been encouraged to invest in the Czech lands, although I intended to establish manufactories in Poland. However, in the meantime, I discovered the state house and encountered governance challenges. Subsequently, I attacked France to seize Calais. Since winning battles was crucial in this war, I initially focused on smaller French alliance armies, though Poland did not make it easy for me. Ultimately, I won most battles but had to engage personally to achieve victory. I executed several battles under Czech army command. Fortunately, the French seemed inclined to help, as they had an army without a leader. I had to exploit this opportunity, resulting in enormous losses for them until their entire army was shattered. Consequently, I seized Calais from France along with substantial wealth. Surprisingly, Calais was severely underdeveloped, there were no marketplaces here. As my ruler passed away, I inherited Poland and contemplated the governance implications. Now I must disband armies and improve stacks, some of which are inadequate. However, I'm delighted to have inherited the cloth hall. Before establishing the rule of law in Poland and building courts everywhere, I introduced an aristocratic court as the sixth governmental reform, which should reduce aggressive expansion more favorably. Wait, I've just realized I also integrated Hungary. Am I observant or what? For some reason, integrating Hungary and Poland has reduced my governance unexpectedly. What's going on? Finally, I attacked the Ottoman Empire, as you may have noticed, aiming to reclaim the remaining Balkan territories. What else could I have done? With so much free governance, I've integrated all Polish territories into my realm. After regaining prestige and stabilizing, I could embark on the mission to reclaim the legacy of Great Moravia. Now that I have a very young ruler, he will benefit from this bonus as long as he lives. The legacy of Great Moravia must not be forgotten. The realm of Mojmir, Rostislav and Svatopluk has not been forgotten. Great Moravia, the cradle of Slavic Christianity and the birthplace of our first written script has left an indelible mark on our history. Long live Great Moravia. This decision has allowed me to restore Great Moravia. While I can't achieve the goal I planned for this achievement, I'll show you this country soon. First, I need to finish dealing with the Ottoman Empire. Finally, the Evangelical Union. As the proud first Protestant nation, I joined this league with... Hello? I can't join? Really? After concluding the war with the Ottoman Empire, I joined the Protestant League, led by Sweden, which is interesting. I also formed an alliance with the Swedes, just in case I couldn't join the League normally due to, for instance, being occupied with conquering Prussia for myself. Oh, the League war just broke out, and I foresee a great victory here. Moscow isn't in this war, neither is the Livonian Order nor Prussia, so it's essentially just a small part of the Holy Roman Empire plus Great Britain. At this point, I advise making a backup save, because what happens immediately after this war is quite random. For now, it doesn't quite work as Paradox planned, but I'll wait to explain until the Imperial incident. The League war typically starts when the league leader determines they have the advantage. 
over the emperor and his allies. It wasn't difficult in our situation. Usually, the strongest Protestant state becomes the League leader. The most crucial aspects of the League war are winning battles, which I'm struggling with, and systematically removing smaller states. It's also essential to capture the emperor's capital, already achieved in this case, because I'm focused on winning this war, not a white piece. Given that Great Britain is involved, it might pose a minor problem. Therefore, I withdrew my fleet to the Mediterranean to upgrade and modernize it. Simultaneously, I aim to recruit at least 30 transport ships. The rest should be sufficient. After winning the war with Moscow, I transfer the remainder of my troops to the Western Front. Where are my armies? I don't see them. It seems my armies have a significant advantage over the enemy, inflicting massive losses. The quality of my army is also playing a role, literally annihilating the enemy army. I now have somewhat better military commanders and aim to recruit better generals with army tradition. I transfer occupation to the Swedes in the war to encourage their withdrawal from the conflict. Munster immediately agreed to peace. In fact, after a few years, the Catholic League is now very weak. Essentially, I leave continental Europe's affairs to the AI. My troops are preparing for a landing on Great Britain. What I do next? I don't even have 30 ships. I didn't want to wait. During the invasion of Great Britain, it's crucial to establish a foothold quickly for rapid troop movement. Best done manually as the AI struggles with this. Only afterward can we proceed with naval blockades and further island conquests. Although I must say I'm surprised by the weakness of the British fleet, Protestantism has become the official faith of the Holy Roman Empire. Although the Hussites mainly fought here, Protestantism has truly triumphed. Well, at least for a while. As for the Imperial Incident, which should start within a year, it began immediately for me. Its condition is that at the end of the war, through the victory of Protestants, which is this event, the number of Hussite provinces represents 80% of the value of all other provinces in the HRE. During this event, it will be determined whether Hussitism becomes the dominant faith in the Holy Roman Empire or not. At this point, what the AI does is entirely random. Fortunately, most duchies support the dominant Hussite faith, including the Emperor. Oh, here's the information at the bottom. The Emperor favors this option, although I'm unsure why, as he doesn't like me. Nevertheless, I'll work on improving relations with him, and in a year, I'll find out if I'll be the Hussite Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. Although I noticed a note at the top that interested me. The Emperor will choose the Hussite option if reduced to one province and has less than 50 war score in a war with me. It's strange because I'm not at war with him. Perhaps I'm lucky that a one province duchy remains the Protestant Emperor. Success! Bohemia is now the Hussite Emperor. Literally an Emperor, Bohemia and Hussitism. What are Protestant electors doing when Hussitism dominates? I'm not pleased with this. Worst of all, we've lost our elector status in the meantime, which is very unpleasant. Frankly, the next 50 years of managing the empire will be an existential pain, as I convert all these states to the one true faith and recover 16 provinces. What's Denmark doing in the middle of the empire? I think the Danes inherited the Palatinate Union and subsequently its land. However, I've achieved the goal. Regarding Great Moravia, it's evident I need to wait until I establish, or rather build a university in Karlova. Nevertheless, I can show you the potential of Great Moravia because it's incredibly powerful. Their red color is also quite impressive. Unfortunately, I haven't received any new missions, which is a shame. But look at these ideas. They make it a robust country for waging wars, conquests, and furthering the Hussite faith. And in this episode, you can see another new Ayyubid empire that I created from this single province state ruled by the last heirs of Saladin.